actions mean the demons got into the souls of the people that died here. Founded in 1792, Sweet Springs Resort Park, a sanitarium as some people call it, sits all the way out in the Gap Hills of West Virginia. It was a booming resort all the way up until around 1852 when the resort business started to decline. It was operational until the owner at the time went bankrupt in 1930. From 1942 to 1945, it operated as a sanitarium for tuberculosis patients. It was purchased by the state in 1945 and turned into a memorial home, but was closed in 1991. It later opened in later 2020 for paranormal investigations, which is what brought us here today. Okay, in the room 3007 is a very popular room because there's a lady in a blue dress that a lot of people have seen and or, and or have talked to. Not a lot is known why this place gets activity other than we are sure people died in and around the location while it wore the many different hats. That was the first hotel. That's right. where George Washington stayed. Philip George Washington, the president. Yeah, the president. So with all that being said, it's a blank slate for us to go in and try to make Gary a believer at this location. So I think it is time to get on with this investigation and make a believer out of Gary. This is Skeptic. So have you heard anecdotally of who has expressed interest, not individuals, but does some body want it or does some entity or does somebody want it to turn it into a, you know, restore it as a resort or to tear it down and use the bricks or to do what with it? What have you heard? Now, thankfully, the, most of the interest we have has not been in uh, demolishing the property. Uh, from a personal level, I'd hate to see that happen. What's your name? Ashby Berkeley. Ashby Berkeley? Yeah. It's really nice to meet you. I'm Logan. Logan, it's nice to have you down here. We love to have we love people have interest in this place. Yeah. Yeah, I know the history is super intriguing. It for really sure. is. And it's a public park now. Yeah. It's uh, I bought it in the, at public auction because they were planning on tearing it down and making a mobile home court here. Yeah. And so um, and then I donated it to the public so we would have a public park. The, I'm not bragging about that. I mean, it was, I, I can't consider it a, a, a really privileged opportunity to do that. Uh, the bathhouse is known for its spring, which remains a consistent 72 degrees year-round. And it was believed, it's still believed, that the uh, the waters have a medicinal quality to them. Uh, it's gone through a long history. It was built in the 1700s. Many, many famous uh, folks in history have visited the spring, uh, including Queen Victoria. They're not alone in that hobby. Uh, most of the people we've talked to uh, that are, you know, are very involved even in the historical side of the state didn't realize this resort still exists or even existed ever. So my name is Gary Barnage. I am uh, obviously the skeptic. Uh, if you've seen anything before, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in any of this stuff. They are all believers. They're trying to make me a believer. Hasn't happened yet. I don't think it's gonna happen tonight, but I'm all for trying to figure it out. So, so you should fit in. So you should fit in. Uh, <laughs> oh, bro, look. Everybody owns a tractor out here. Not only do they own a the tractor, but it was underneath their carports or parked in their garages and their cars were sitting outside. I mean, it looks creepy. <laughs> it definitely looks creepy. 
Alright. Oh, that's, that's gonna be interesting to see what Harkey says. No, I had no I, no clue. Do you have one, any one, recollection one second, of the we're building? We're in Virginia now, we're in West Virginia. Yeah. So, uh, but I saw that, what were we, Sweet Springs? Sweet Springs. Yeah, when I saw that sign, I was, OD, I was like, hey, that sounds like a cool name for something bad to happen, so. Okay. If that's cool with you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We're very easy laid back. Sounds, sounds we do things good. differently because I don't believe, so they're trying to prove it to me. I'm debunking a lot of stuff that I think mm -hmm. that happens. This could be the place where you will believe. First thing you have to know, in the 1700s, this building wasn't here. Okay. On over, over this way, where the stay where y'all came by the tent, yes. on the ridge behind, uh, behind there, okay. was a log house, and that's the uh, log uh, building. Okay. That was the first hotel. Right. That's where George Washington stayed and until it burned down. George Washington, the president. Yeah, the president. Okay. Uh, and then there was a second hotel over that way after that one burned down. And so this one was built a good bit after that. Like I say, uh, Thomas Jefferson designed this, but he wasn't alive when they started on it. First impressions, uh, it looks haunted. Just like most of the places we go, it definitely looks haunted. I think Gary, it's gonna be tough getting Gary, but I think we might get him here. Based on what I've heard and people have been talking about, yeah, I think we're gonna, we're gonna experience some, some stuff. This is going to be the place that proved to Gary that ghosts, demons, or uh, the unknown does exist. Mark my word. So, we're starting off with the group. Uh, what we're actually going to do, we have a bunch of equipment. We're going to set all this stuff down. We'll explain everything as we set it down. So first we're gonna go through and set this stuff in different rooms. And then we're gonna start at the very top and work our way through the whole location and do our group investigation and go from there. We're out. So with that being said, I'm a little nervous with this one because it, the groundskeeper was talking about all the activity that they get. And he hadn't been in here himself at night. And the things that he said charged this place are actually taking place tonight. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that, uh, absolutely. But at the same time, we got a job we gotta get done. I gotta make sure that these guys are going in there and they're safe and that they're getting around and that we're getting the investigation and the things that we need to prove Gary, uh, that get him out of this skeptical illusion that he's been living his entire life and let him know that the unknown does exist. Okay, here we can see. All right, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna pull out the spirit box. So what we're gonna do is something different than what other people do. We're actually not gonna tell you what we hear. We're actually gonna write it down on these whiteboards and then we're gonna get our own for each question. And then that way, we're not influencing you as a viewer on what exactly we hear. Because we want you to get your own interpretation of what you hear versus what we hear. Priest. If anybody's down here with us, what is your name? How many people are in the room right now? This is normally not my thing, like the group investigation in terms of participation. So I'm trying to, you know, uh, inject myself in the group investigation because I know that doing solos, that's where I come to life. So I'm trying to extend my reach as it relates to being more active in the investigation. I only heard one thing I thought to one question. 
And I'm gonna show you what that was, which was the third question, which is how many people were here? And I only had one thought. That's what I got. So does seven. <laughs> that's what I, that's yes. what I wrote down to. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm writing the, what the question was, but I had wrote seven as well. Yes, we can show you, I wrote it down as seven yeah. for that. Promise. We all wrote down a seven mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Okay. What does it say? Promise. All right, well, we're gonna move to a different location. But first, we also have a bowling pin in the room, and then we also have a music box. All right, well, I'm gonna throw in this spirit box, throw these headphones on, and if you wanna interact that way, feel free. This is one of my favorite investigating activities of all the devices and stuff that we use. Because Gary puts headphones on and he puts it, he hooks it to a spear box. You ask questions, Gary can't hear you. He's just spitting out whatever he hears. And let's see if it answers the question that Gary's asking or that everybody's asking. All right, so Gary's got the head headset on. We're gonna ask you some questions and you can talk through that and he can hear you. Is there anyone in here with us? Proceed. Mm. What's your name? Are you alive? All right, we're gonna work our way to the other side. What's up, Sam? What's going on? Sounds like it's going off, doesn't it? Oh no, it's definitely going off. Yes. I think that's bad. First, we're going to throw off the spirit box. So, was there anybody down here setting off the rim pod? How many people are down here? Amanda, do you need our help? Amanda, do you need our help? Please tell us how we can help you. All right, did y'all get anything you wrote down that you're gonna show the camera? So I heard. When you asked, do you want help the first time? I heard, yes, sir. Then help from was I heard devil, and then do you need help or what do you want from us? And you heard help. That's it. That's, good. that's what. That's the three things I heard. I got the help. But again, it's so hard to make out because it was never clear. All right. Well, we're gonna work our way out then. It was okay. We didn't get a ton of evidence, but 
But things can change on a solo. I think they're scared yeah. of Gary. I mean, look at him. Wouldn't you be scared of him? It has been a uh, running this theme on all of them. Be great. Yeah. You know, Rebecca Gary's did say, you know. Rebecca did say that. I think Gary's extreme just, confidence just, of not being a believer probably did scare a lot of stuff away in there. So you weren't here, so I'll give you the backstory. So we did a investigation <laughs> with uh, one of our friends who's a medium, Rebecca. And I went in, she went in with other people and things went crazy. Things were happening all over the place. They got ran out. And then I'd go in with her. And she's like, it's the weirdest thing. There's literally nothing going on. I mean, absolutely nothing. And I'm like, okay, well, let me walk out of the room and you stay in this room. So I walked to a different room. She's standing there, she's like, well, things are starting to pick up a little bit. So come back in here. So I went back in there, nothing again. So then I go back and I was like, so what, what's your reason why you think that is? And she was like, uh, she said, well, you could have a demon or an angel on your shoulder. I don't see negative, I don't see bad things from you, so I don't think it's a demon. You could have an angel on your shoulder. And then the whole story from, she never knew this, was I was born with pneumonia and I wasn't supposed to live. The very next day, completely cleared. There was no pneumonia, no nothing. So ever since then, I was always told I had an angel on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. So that would be, it was an interesting coincidence. She went to that, but that's a very generic response. A demon or an angel could be on your shoulders while you're not. Yeah. But I also th thought of the same aspect of, I'm a very big guy. Most most people aren't my size like that that are doing this type of stuff. Yeah. So that could play a part into it. Should they be scared? No, I can't do nothing to them. Just like they're not gonna do anything to me. Yeah. But it's interesting, I'll give you that. But when you go in there by yourself, it's pitch black and it's just you, yeah. everything changes. What? Like you're still gonna be fine, but you're gonna you're gonna feel a different type of way. Even I do when I go in, like because it, it, it's 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 just I weird. It's dark as fuck. Yes, <laughs> and you got a headlamp. You can turn it on, and walk around and everything, but you don't leave it on the whole time. We've had people that have. Don't do that. You can leave it on red the whole time if you want. Okay. All right. So, who are we going with first? Yeah. I'd rather go last, <laughs> to be honest. So if they yeah, stir it up, is hurt. well, that way, if they <laughs> stir it up, it's yeah. yeah. crazy for me. Let's, let's yeah. hook me up. Let's go. <laughs> like, uh, he already yeah. knew, bro. Uh, Ricky, you want to go at, first? At that point, he's the tallest. I'm the shortest. I know it ain't gonna be Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the middle. So, and I'm the new guy. I'm the new guest. guy goes first. Oh, that's right. I'm a guest. So they're gonna say, "Oh, guest, go first. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can kick it off with that. What is it going to take for me to drop the skeptic tag and be a complete believer? It's going to be very hard, and I'm sorry to say this, Harky, but it's going to take Harky getting dragged into a room and me seeing it uh, for me to be a believer, or for somebody to get grabbed and yanked down the stairs, uh, something chilling, killing, something happen uh, to make me a believer because I need something physically to happen to somebody. So I'm literally challenging something to physically happen to somebody to make me a believer. Sounds don't make me a believer because animals can make sounds and confuse people's minds. Uh, this place is 50,000 years old. Not that old, but it's old, so it creaks. Creaks ain't gonna make me a believer. The spirit box still not random words isn't probably gonna make me a believer. I'm gonna need physical harm done to somebody to make me a believer, or to me, either way. Yeah, you know, I was at the premiere of the uh, Euro, Shrine, Euro Shrine. Saw how Gary was, and I thought, you know, I'm kind of the same way, and I feel like I can do this. I can walk through here too. So we're gonna see. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of 75 percent here as being a skeptic. I mean, I do want to believe. I'm like kind of like Gary. I, I really would like to see some type of something, you know, um, and make me a more of a believer. So, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna find out. Okay. Harky's a little nervous. Um, just trying to get him through it right now. Uh, it's different when you're working with somebody, man, that that you never worked with before. So when you know guests come on the show, you kind of gotta tell them everything. 
So we're down in the Reaper room. Give us, give us what you're feeling. It's uh, super dark now, D. Um, yeah, we're pushing up there. We're getting on to six. We're going. We're going over to five now for sure. Six. We're on six on that fear meter out of ten. I'm sure there's not many good or nice things, probably. Uh, the way the place looks, the appearance-wise, and the feeling-wise. Uh, it feels like probably some bad things took place down in this room. So, um... Tell them to yeah. set the music box off. If there's somebody down here with me, set the music box off. If someone's down here, with me, can you set the music box off? We have a music box in place on the floor right here. Feel free to set it off. Let you off. I ask, is there any cowboy fans in the building? Are there any Dallas Cowboy fans besides me in this room? I think I heard someone say it, they're America's team. Do you need my help? Hey, Harkin, let's go to the slave room. I don't like the way you said that. Mmm. So I need you to give me what this room feels like when you walked in. Smell, touch, just walk us through what this room feels like. It's a, it's a deep chill oh, when you walk in this room. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's like you, when I come in that door right there, as soon as you cross that door right there, you, 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 temperature drops like 10 degrees. Oh, he said the temperature dropped 10 degrees. That's kind of crazy. That is. You said the temperature dropped 10 degrees? Yep. Easily. Hang on a second, I wanna see something. Is this what we smelled earlier? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Ooh. Whoa. Did that just say yes? Are you here? Are you there? Are you there? What's going on right now? Talk to me, Hardy. Amanda? I just have like a, I have like a strong like feeling every time I say Amanda, there's like a something going to be said. I just feel like there's a, if there is a spirit in this room named Amanda that needs my help. You can touch my shoulder. My my first impressions on that or my first my thoughts are like he was it's interesting when you have guests because you don't you don't exactly know what you're gonna get. I mean even when they're uh, not scared and all that again when you take them from their pack when you separate them from their pack 
and you put them in there by themselves, whether it's an old childhood fear of being scared of the dark or the fact that he's had some activity and paranormal activity, you kind of run those things together. It's gonna be, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm interested to hear what he says about the 25% versus the 75 now uh, in terms of him believing and non-believing. Uh, now that he's gone in there, he's gotten some activity in terms of uh, Amanda talking back to him. I don't even know where he got the name from. Oh, Okay, everybody. Made it back. Wow. Okay, gotta get the, get the chills off the arms right now. Um, yeah, I kept, I think I struck a nerve down in that slave room um, that we picked on earlier, a, a word Amanda came across one of the devices that Taylor was using. Um, and I just kept asking uh, about Amanda and help. And, oh, I think, uh, I think we got a definite answer on that. So, um, yeah, um, definitely a deep, cold chill down there in that room. So, to be honest, uh, and I think I would stay down there a whole lot longer with, with a group asking the same question. You just feel more comfortable, not, you know, with a group, 100% comfortable. Um, but yeah. We'll see what tomorrow holds. Um, you know, as the alpha of the group, I try to put on a straight face, you know, keep the boys from getting too excited, but in all reality, I'm a little freaked out. Um, yeah, I think the energy is not as bad in here as Bobby Mackey's, but I still feel like there's something here. So I guess we can just go find out. All right, well, everything just died on me at the same time, which is kind of creepy. But we're back in action, heading to the Pulitzer Pod room. At least this room has light. All right, D, I'm approaching the Pulitzer Pod room. Oh, shoot. Hello. <laughs> Bro, that's just my back step. Let me make sure it's not any interference. Nope, that was definitely something. Hey, can you tell me who that was? Who just walked in front of the REM pod? Is there anybody else in here with me? I hope I didn't scare you away. I just want to talk. Um, I am turned around a little bit. I don't remember even being in this room. <clears throat> All right, we set the EVP down. So this, this is the slave room. Um, we got a couple of names from this room. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get a male or female name. Uh, just um, ask, uh, uh, is there anybody in here with you? Kind of the same, same thing. You gotta convince them that you're a good guy, man. Like, you know, it's a slave quarter. Hey, I'm a good guy, you know, I'm not... I, I would have voted against slave. I would have been with, with Lincoln. I would have been with the North, not the South. So feel free to talk to me. I, I'm <laughs> on your side, I don't wanna hurt you. I just wanna know more about you. I just got done with my 
solo. If you ever saw my heart rate on a monitor, it would have been the 160s easy. Uh, it was very scary. Like I said before, I didn't have nearly as bad an energy uh, as Bobby Mackey's. And even, even Waverly seemed a little bit darker. This place seems... I definitely interacted with something, um, but it didn't seem malicious. It didn't seem as evil as the other places I've seen. So uh, it helped with the, with the nerves, but it was still very... It's always scary when it's dark, you know? It's scary when you're, not, when you're by yourself and there's sounds and... I don't know, I'm just glad I'm done. <laughs> Until tomorrow, at least. Uh, but yeah, it was good. It was semi-successful. We got the really good evidence with the rim bot, uh, which I always had a hint, or I always had kind of an idea that something was sitting there. And it looked like I kind of scared it back. So, uh, anyways, on to the next one. So this is my first confessional. I'm the last to go. They both spent about 40 minutes inside. So that could be good or bad. Maybe they were experiencing things, maybe they weren't. So they were in there for so long. Um, I'm intrigued in what's gonna happen. It is dark. It's a little chilly outside, so I had to throw my jacket on. Um, I don't really have any expectations or feelings going on right now because I don't really know what to expect. We didn't really have much experience with the group, so things could go crazy there, but who knows? We'll find out once I get rolling. All right, I'll see you afterwards. I don't think so. I don't think we're gonna have anything like I had at Bobby Mackey's. It's probably gonna be more in the wet realm of Waverly or the other places where nothing really happens. And it's a 10 to 15 minute, but I could be wrong. I'm working my way upstairs to the starting point. And we'll see how this goes. Um, his energy levels are not where I need him to be because every time he goes in these places as a skeptic, that's the energy that the building feeds back to him. So I'm thinking maybe if I could get him in a more positive, like upbeat, um, uh, with with more energy, with you know what I'm saying, like maybe they'll gravitate toward him and give him the paranormal activity that I think he deserves. If anybody wants to interact, feel free. Got this bear, you can touch it. What are you looking at right now? Talk to us, Gary. Um, I'm, when I'm in here, it's just, it's dark. Like, I don't know how to reiterate to people watching that. It's, it's pitch black in here. Okay, I'm gonna show anybody, if anybody wants this teddy bear. Come up and touch it, it'll make noise. I'm a fan of the teddy bear, um, but in the last few investigations that we've used the teddy bear, um, I don't think I've heard it go off any at all. Um, I'm not saying that it's not a, um, one of those that should be should or shouldn't be used in paranormal investigations i'm just saying it hadn't worked for us um uh, in our in the episodes that we've used it for
If there's some that just did that, can you do that again? If there's some that just did that, can you do that again? trying to figure it out we don't have any camera coverage in that particular area so hopefully he captures it on his on his camera I have this little spirit box in my hand if you would like to come and talk to it Can you say my name? Is anybody in here with me? So... <laughs> I was skeptic, I was skeptical, uh, and this is me being honest with you guys, about um, when Rebecca said what she said to Gary about having an angel or a devil on her sh his shoulder. Uh, I didn't really understand at the time what it meant when she was telling him this, and I was like, oh man, that's bull crap. But I honestly believe that because when this man walks into a any type of paranormal activity type situation, it immediately calms down. Do you want me like, to leave? To the point to where like it's almost non-existent. So there's something uh, within his spirit that's calming these other spirits. No. I just don't know what it is. Alright Gary, you should see if any soldiers died in this place because it did happen in the late 1700s. Did any, have any soldiers died in this location? What year did you die? I'm gonna turn this off now. It blows my mind, uh, like how he, I, I don't know if it's his attitude, if it's um, personality, if it's fact that he and is it potentially be scared battery, not scared whatever it is that he uses when he goes into these very active active paranormal uh activity spots and get no activity none whatsoever blows my mind like it literally his energy levels literally suck the energy out of the place It's wild to me that George Washington stayed on these premises and Thomas Jefferson's blueprint was, this is the result of Thomas Jefferson, our, one of our forefathers' blueprint. Well, today we're gonna come up with a little bit something different. Chris Harkey, we have Taylor, and we also have Gary. So I'm thinking what we could do is, is doing their interviews, to kick this thing off, because I think it'll be pretty dope. We have duos. 
We had some excitement in day one. We had some things happen. Um, but I'm pretty sure in day two, after talking with the groundskeeper, Jerry, uh, off camera, he was telling me that he thought day two would be our most explosive day because we get to go to room 3007. Uh, there's a lady in the blue dress. Um, don't say anything, but you know, I'm not sure what her name is, but I remember in day one, uh, there was conversations that was had to Amanda and all these other different female um, entities. So, you know, hopefully they tie into each other today and that we kind of get some explanations with that. But I'm looking forward to day two because the hottest of the hot spots of Sweet Springs is today. So what I'll do is, I'll set up the EVP. I'll just lay it right on top of this fire alarm. So if there's anything in here that wants to interact, you can talk through this and we'll be able to pick it up later. And then also I have this. If you talk near my phone, we can hear you as well. Here we go, recording. All right. Would it help to unplug it and plug back in? Oh, culture pod's going off. Pod's going off. Just what? Ooh. Is someone in? Is someone in here with us? It could just be malfunctioning. Ooh, that's spooky. That's weird. <laughs> that's spooky. All right, we're gonna go back to this room. Hi, is there somebody in here with us? Is that you setting the rim pod off? We even reset it too. Let me change the range on. Now, if you wanna set it off again, you're gonna have to get a little closer. Okay, we see you. Can you walk around to the other side? REM pod's gone off a few times. Um, Are you from the 1700s? There's a lot of this is one of the more active spots in this entire place. Uh, this in room 3007. This REM pod has been going crazy on this counter. Uh, I'm just assuming that whatever entity that, that, that hunts this particular place is very particular about this area. And I'm, I like it. I like it. Why are you stuck here? See something? No, I heard something. Okay, where are we going? I think this is the 2007 over here, right? Say what? Red going off again. Hello? 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 Hey, we're just checking in. We're back real quick. We're not gonna stay long. But if you wanna do something or say something, we might stay.
Feel free to take a seat if you want or kick over that bowling pin. What was that? One of the curtains just went blue. Was that you? What was that? All right, that was freaky. So I'm moved. Can you do that again? All right, that wasn't like normal. Like that was actually something moving. Yeah. Appreciate you doing that. Can you do that to the bowling pin? That was one of those moments where if I was in here by myself, <laughs> I it would have been out. I would have been, uh, I would have struggled so hard to stay in here. Uh, hot spot of this location. And me and Harky are gonna set the, there we go. We're gonna set the music box in this chair over here. That way, if anything passes over it, it passes over it. It passes over it because we're not gonna be going in that area. Is that me? That's the REM pod. Okay. Walk down get my. That might be doing it. This, this is what did it. Yeah. This is what was going on. Last night, someone needed help. Someone asked for help. We still need our help. Just answer, yes or no. I think there's somebody really wanting, I mean, I, some, something's wanting to talk. Something's wanting to tell something. But. That was insane. You're going to the boiler room. 3007. The gifts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what we'll do is we're all entered together, and you guys are split at the hallway. Uh, it was just a shadow. I thought I saw the thing oh, move, but it was a shadow. Okay. No, I feel good. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to this thing. Um, I know. Parky's not, but I am. Yeah. Now it's me and Harky. All right, buddy. In case I don't see you again. Love you. All right, don't let him drag you. Come to the danger. So we're walking in for all our mini solos. My headset died, died. my head man died. So I gotta use my phone light, which I only have 30% of, so. We're about to drop one guy off right here. We're about to walk into the ballroom. This is where we lose Taylor. Yep. Taylor gets to sit in these chairs right here. This it's chair. Like, um, the interrogation chair. Yep. 
the little speaker. I'm going to hold it closer to this so I can see. Okay. If anybody is down here and wants to interact with me, feel free. I got this little spirit box you can talk through. Is anybody down here with me? So it doesn't sound like anybody wants to con talk through the spirit box. So I'm just going to sit down here quiet. If anybody wants to talk, if anybody wants to make any noise, knock anything over, feel free. Just let me know if you want to make your presence known. We've got a bowling pin right over here. Other than that, I'm going to be quiet and just let you, if you want to make yourself known, feel free. Is there anyone in here? Have you got anything different? I think the thing's going nuts. This room is 3007. Belongs to someone. Is this person a male or a female? Mark is terrified, okay? I'm Taylor, I'm just here. I was here earlier. Murder, perfect. All right, did someone get murdered here? That's how we're gonna start, huh? We have Taylor here. Taylor's in the ballroom right now, or the look at me room, or the listen to me room. Blue. Yeah, my hat's blue, my jeans are blue, and my shirt's blue. You like the color blue? How many people are here with me? Testing, testing. What kind of dancing did you guys do? There's the waltz, the foxtrot. What's your favorite? Yeah, I know the foxtrot. Hey, what? I'm dancing. It said I was teasing. It said I was teasing about dancing. So I'm, I'm that noise I'm is dancing. Taylor above me because he's above me in the ballroom. You want to dance with me, George? <laughs> How was that? How were my moves? They need work, huh? Were there a lot of fancy events that happened here? Yeah, I don't know the history of this place. I didn't do any research before I came because they wouldn't let me because of Bobby Mackey's. So you freak out once and they just ban you from all information.
Do you want me to leave? Am I in any harm by being in this room? Do you want me to leave this room? Man. Do you want to man? I'm about ready to get out of this room. Rocky right here, I am gonna walk on down because not feeling really too secure about the situation. Yo, you want me to come down with you? I'm, I'm coming to the ballroom. No, I can't hear him. I think I don't know if my thing went dead or what. I was just doing some dancing in here. <laughs> That's just a little too. Uh, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I'm not comfortable up there. Yeah, not no, I, I get it, dude. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, it's, let's, I don't mind going with everybody else, but <laughs> you know, you, you know, by yourself, you ask those questions and it's like, Am I hearing what I think I'm hearing, or am I not? You know, it's, it's just too much for me right there. Dude, situation. I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame yeah. you. I'm, the only reason I'm still here is because it's right on the first floor, and I can hear them right there. <laughs> yeah. It's like I said, hey, is there someone in here with me? And I, I, To me, it sounds like I am. Is there anyone in here? You talking about trying to attack Taylor? Nice. Sweet Springs Resort. I think there are some ghosts here. I don't know how many. I don't know if they're necessarily mean. They seem like they're just hanging out. It was, it, we definitely got some paranormal activity. How long have you been here? Again, you know, you want to believe, right? So, um, and definitely when I get in there, the devices are going off and stuff. So something has got to be, there's got to be some kind of spirit of some sort in there. I feel good. Um, I feel proud of myself for not running out, especially after last time. But I, I had a reason to run out last time. I didn't have one here. Um, but I would say at least a seven, like I say, because up and down there was moments that, you know, moments were 10. And then, you know, there was moments it was just cold. So it's, I, I'm gonna go with seven. Well, I don't know what I rated my previous investigations. Uh, I know I gave Bobby a 10. Uh, that's the benchmark to me. Bobby Mackey's is the benchmark, so compared to that, I give it a seven. Yeah, granted, we wasn't there, but there was some sliding or some sounds that was made in the hallway. And those sounds that were made in the hallway, uh, I think were enough for me because, I mean, where else would those sounds come from? I understand he said he heard a thud. I think that thud was them letting him know like, hey, we're here, but again, Gary needs more concrete evidence, and I can understand that. From what I, what I, way I feel about it for Gary, I, I don't probably not, probably not, because again, I don't think he got what he really. Even though we we kind of, you know, we all thought we heard uh, at one point I think it was day one about the number, and we all wrote down the same number, uh, but again, I mean, I, I think he would like to have got more evidence than just that. 
Gary is not more of a believer. No, he he's this. There was nothing really concrete here. Uh, Gary's gonna need something like tangible. Gary's gonna need somebody to touch him, pick him up, spin him around, put him back down, and actually have a physical conversation with him in order for him to become a believer. Was there something there? Can you make some more noise for me again? I think we got some good evidence. I think we got some intelligent responses from the REM pod. We had a lot of activity with the REM pod. Are you a fan of Dwayne Johnson? Uh, the apps on my phone, they were okay. I it spit out like 35 names. So I don't know if there was 35 people there, but it didn't seem like it because it was pretty quiet. All right, D, I'm approaching the Pulitzer pod room. Oh, shoot. Hello. But that being said, the piece of evidence with the curtain, once I, I really want to watch that again, or want to watch that for the first time, because if it really moved, that's one of the best pieces of evidence I've gotten since I've been a part of the show. I haven't had anything really physical happen like that. So that piece of evidence, a 10. The rest of the investigation, seven. What was that? One of the curtains. We heard uh, yeah. something. Was that you? So it was like a kind of like, like a someone slapped the curtain. I guess. What was that? Here, our final interview. Just a little foreshadowing before this whole thing kicked off. I looked Jerry in his eyes and I said, Jerry, this is gonna be the place that turned Gary from a skeptic into a believer. I feel like this was my chance and I think we shine. You, you went in on your, your solo investigation and this is the first investigation that you've ever been on solo where it froze you in your tracks, not saying that you were scared or anything like that to where it caught your attention. Tell us about it. That is correct. Now, the unfortunate aspect is we had some battery issues. So I didn't get to do the full solo. Uh, but yes, as I was making my way with my last 10 minutes of battery down to the basement, as, as soon as I walked through the door to get to the staircase, I heard a noise. Is there something that just did that? Can you do that again? Now, it did stop me. We don't have a camera there, but I was recording. So I'm hoping we caught the sound on the camera. Don't know where it came from. I walked around a little bit to see. Didn't really see anything. I tried to get it to react and make noise again. Again, could have just been, I don't know if there's heat in here, but heat turning on or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Cause it sounded like that type of noise, but it also could have been, there's a lot of boxes in there. So a box could have been moved. Something could have fell out of a right. box, but I didn't notice anything out of place. Um, hoping we caught the sound as I walked through, but I was recording cause I was recording as I walked through. So hopefully we have that caught. I'm gonna probably go on a limb and say that you're still a skeptic. Uh, with that being said, we're going to continue this journey of, of, going above and beyond on this journey to sh to prove to you that the unknown exists. Not only that, but we're gonna bring other guests along with us. We're gonna continue, Taylor and I, striving to get things done in order to prove to you that the paranormal does exist. I welcome the challenge. <laughs> Is there any real evidence from this investigation? Um, I would say nothing that I witnessed. Uh, I don't know what everybody else witnessed. I heard what they said, but I hadn't seen it, so I don't know. I don't think I personally got anything that was evidence uh, that was being able to be proved. So I would say no. Um, I'm gonna say I'm still skeptic. I would like to uh, invite anybody that thinks they can try to do this, because people always look at it and say, like Harky, he watched it and he's like, oh, I could do that, no problem. 
as we see, he almost, he sped walk out of his mini solo. He didn't really run, but he was ready to go. So if you ever get a chance, take a look at it, go out and try this, go have fun with it and good luck. So we have came to the end of our investigation at Sweet Springs Sanatorium slash Resort Park. What would I rate it? I'd probably rate it somewhere around a four out of 10 on the investigation aspect, on the location, I'd probably give it a seven out of 10. A very spooky, very creepy in there, but we didn't really get much that happened. So I'm still a skeptic, but it's time to move on to the next location. I hope y'all enjoy this one, and I hope you join us on the ride for the next one. Until we see you next time, I'm gonna venture off into the unknown.